Yeehaw! It's YouTube Tuesday. This is Jean with CAMJ Farm. We're an educational retail uh, herb, egg, and music farm here in beautiful Matthews County, Virginia. I tell you, uh, I'm exhausted. I just got home from a trip to Florida to see our granddaughter graduate, and it was wonderful. It was wonderful to reconnect with family after these couple of years with COVID and everything. We haven't seen much of each other. And um, our farm has grown so much that it's hard for CA and I to be away together right now. And uh, hopefully we can change that in the future. But uh, so he stayed here and I went to uh, the graduation and to visit with everybody. And our son was there too. And it was wonderful. And, uh, and it was a wonderful weekend uh, full of, you know, friends I hadn't seen in a while. And, um, and, and the family too. And our grandkids, two of our grandkids were there. Um, and our other two live in Northern Virginia, but, um, but it was great to reconnect and, you know, you need to do that sometimes, but, you know, I, we usually, uh, drive, we're more driving people. I mean, we've always been driving people. <laughs> That's just who we are, you know, and, um, but to be faster and with the price of gas and everything too, um, and although I said, I, I'd be fine to drive, you know, I'm not a very experienced flyer, so I'm always a little more comfortable, um, driving, but CA's like, no, you can't drive, you know, 14 hours <laughs> by yourself. I said, sure I can, <laughs> but he said no. So anyway, so I did get plane tickets for this trip and uh, it was quite interesting. Traveling, flying has changed so much since I've done it. And, uh, but you know, it really reinforced to me that we're all the same. We're all the same, and no matter who, where we're from, or what we're trying to accomplish, or which uh, area of the world we're in, I, I met so many international people uh, flying from here to uh, Orlando. It was kind of crazy, but uh, but it just made me realize that we are all the same. Um, a lot of people seem very stressed out, and uh, the airlines seem like they're uh, struggling a little bit. I didn't get home till like 4 a.m. this morning, and poor CA had to pick me up in Richmond, so we didn't get much sleep, so we're going to hit the bed early tonight. Um, and we just had a quiet day today. Thank goodness it was raining, and it canceled out our farm's landscaping gig, and uh, so I could just be here catching up on some things on the computer and, you know, doing laundry and cleaning up the house a little bit, you know. Um, so anyway, we had a quiet day. But uh, anyway, it was it was very interesting um, coming home last night. You know, we ran into bad weather and then one of the planes was broken. So we had to, um, you know, get off and wait and get on another plane. And, you know, of course, that put us back here about 345. So it was kind of crazy. But I met some of the most coolest people and very nice people. Um, although there was one bad incident at the airport while we were waiting to get back on our plane. There was this one dad that. I guess he was losing it. He, um, I guess maybe his son had uh, <laughs> upset him somehow during their trip. <laughs> his son looked like he was in his 20s, and the dad was hollering and screaming and cussing and carrying on, and everybody sitting there like, you know, and his poor son was crying, and and um, I, I felt bad um, that, you know, for both of them. I mean, for the dad losing his temper that badly, it was really, um, re really bad, and uh, I hope I hope they worked it out. But um, other than that, I met some really nice people. I was talking to this one woman from India, and uh, she had been having a good time uh, visiting with girlfriends out west. So she was coming back from there. And um, then I met this young man. Uh, he, he lives in Richmond. I guess he works with a computer company. And then uh, a store, too, I think, um, some kind of food store. But um, anyway, he was he was fascinating. He he and another young lady I met while we were waiting to, for our second connection. We had our, our chargers plugged in at this table, so we're all sitting there, you know. And when, when this dad went off, we all kind of like, you know, became like friends then. <laughs> we were like, uh oh, I hope everything's going to be okay. And we started talking about the conditions of today, you know. And uh, the young lady was sitting there, and she had like those, those um, Bluetooth earbuds in her ears and I said, doesn't that worry you, you know, all that, you know, sending and receiving right there near your brain? And she goes, yeah, she goes, it does. But, but, you know, everything coming out new, she says she really feels like uh, they're the experimental generation <laughs> and I'm afraid they kind of are, <laughs> you know, so it was kind of uh, interesting to hear, to talk to her. Um, I told her about the time that uh, I, I know when the little Bluetooth phone things came out and I, of course, I've been a farmer for many years, and I used to wear one right here. And when I would be farming and weeding and 
cleaning out chicken coops and stuff, I, my phone would ring. I'd just tap the button and I could talk, you know. But I wound up getting a basal cell carcinoma like right over where that was and had to have that removed. And I haven't had any problems since then. Um, and my doctor said he thought maybe that's what caused that because that was like sending and receiving constantly and I wore it all the time. And um, so I do think we do need to be careful, you know. I wish I had back all the brain cells I've killed with uh, with alcohol and red um, hair dye, <laughs> you know. So I don't want to kill any more with just electronics, but, but we'll see. Anyway, but then her, me, and this other young man were sitting here talking. And uh, I guess he used to do farming when he was a kid. And uh, he's in Richmond. He says he's going to come down and check out the farm. So um, I, we really had a good time connecting. And then on the second plane, you know, where I was you know, on and then off and then on again, you were with the same people every time. You were just getting on and off. And there was this young man. He was in sixth grade. He was Vietnamese. And, but he, he, he spoke very well. He knew English very well. And he was going to school in Richmond. And, but he had his parents and his grandparents with him. Nobody spoke English. So here's the sixth grader. Had his whole family relying on him to help them get home. I think they were coming back from visiting an uncle or something out west or something. So, um, but so anyway, he was a little scared when all of a sudden they were like, okay, everybody get off. Something's wrong with the plane. We're going to have to wait. And I think he was a little, he didn't quite know how to handle that. So, and I tell you, it kind of helped me. Instead of focusing on my own misery, I was able to help him and focused on him and helping him get his family calmed down and help them know what they should do and uh, when they took us back off and we changed planes, um, you change gates, you know. And so uh, the woman next to me had the app. I didn't have the app. <laughs> I don't really fly enough to have an app. But anyway, her app said which gate we were going to. And it was way on the other side of the airplane, the airport. So I told him that. And he goes, oh, my gosh, you know. So anyway, so I went with them. And, and um, they, they, they were so sweet. And uh, the young man says he's going to. Uh, they all gave me a hug at the end. And uh, the airline people said thank you, too, because they didn't have to worry about them because I was kind of help, helping them. And like I said, it, it, I, I found it totally um, rewarding. And it... Um, and it helped me focus on something besides my own misery. So, because uh, it was pretty miserable. And it was raining and pouring and the weather was bad. And the flights were really bumpy and kind of scary, you know. So, it was kind of a <laughs> miserable night, you know. But uh, but anyway, all ended well. And uh, But it did. It really, talking to all these people just made me realize again that we're all the same. We're all the same. So um, So, even though you don't have to talk to others... Even though you don't have to, look around and feel out others. And then, uh, yeah, and then, yeah, just talk to people. And if you see somebody looking like they're lost, you know, say, hey, are you okay? You know, and, um, and see if you can't help people. You'll be helping yourself, too. And, you know, next time I'm going to drive, <laughs> you be well. We're heading to bed. Good night.